it starts, um, what are all the manufacturing processes behind, uh, into we hit the stores, basically. Um, identifying markets, uh, the segments of markets, the different segments of, uh, of your specific target market. Um, so I was telling guys, you guys have just arrived. My name is Marina, and I come from the footwear um, uh, industry. And uh, I will be helping you guys to understand the process of product development. Uh, so tell me groups here. How many are you guys? I've heard there are five or six. I know very little about you guys. So I'd like to hear <laughs> what the ideas are, what the products are. So I get, I get please. Hi, uh, my name is Eli. This is Aaron Bergman. Uh, we're part of Team Heartwatch. We're working on a uh, sensor package prototype that will uh, <coughs> allow firefighters to, or commanders on the scene to uh, predict risk factors for sudden cardiac death in firefighters, which is the most common uh, cause of death in firefighters under 40 years old. So uh, we're trying to put together a sensor package that would measure um, as many as possible of the uh, um, biological predictors. Um, for sudden cardiac death, and so it'll involve things like uh, blood oxygen, pulse rate, uh, heart rate variability, uh, as well as some pre-programmed risk factors that the firefighters would input uh, in advance, like age, body weight, amount of exercise, things like that. Okay, and uh, you have the, do you have the actual design, or where are you there? We're flushing that up as we bump against uh, limitations of physics, uh, really. Um, and so we've had about three different iterations of design. At this point, we're thinking um, it would be some sort of um, external monitoring system that then transmits through UHF radio bands. Mm -hmm. um, ideal, hopefully tapping into the <coughs> bands that the departments are already using. Okay. Um, so that's kind of, kind of where we're at now, but it might change next week as okay. we... Okay, so making use of something that's already existed. Yes. Okay, yes. and adapting to what it is. Uh, what would be, what was my job uh, from the beginning of um, the concept all the way to we launched the product? And, um, and hopefully give you guys an idea of all the different teams that are part of that process. It's a very lengthy process, so it really, as you probably know this, depending on the product that you are working with, uh, the development time changes. It can be from one and a half years all the way to ten years, depending on what it is that you, you are um, creating. For you to have an idea, HP um, created the first printer uh, within one and a half years of doing the entire work. Took them a year and a half to come up with the concept, design the product, and commercialize it. Uh, Volkswagen, Volkswagen took, took them 10 years to create the Beetle, which is a long time. And uh, the cost depends on what the product is as well. Uh, for, the sh for the shoe industry, uh, from that perspective, we would start the concept of a line um, in the beginning of the year for the next year season. So beginning of the year, I would be doing spring to that, let's bring it into today's world, to, to, uh, we're in 2017, I would be working with spring 2018. So it would be next year's uh, collection. And that would start with a lot of traveling, going all over Europe and researching all the different designs that were being launched by the high-end designers. They're the lead uh, people. They set the trends. They tell me exactly what it is that I need to create for my specific market. And then I take those inf that information and I transform them, tweak them enough to fit my own market. So my last, my last brand was Nine West. Nine West is a women's uh, wear um, company. It's sort of middle end, uh, so nothing too cheap, but nothing too crazy expensive. Mostly of average women, average American women would buy Nine West shoes. They run from $50 to $100 a pair. Um, so I would take a $20,000 design uh, by Manolo Blanick, bring them into my office, look at it with the designers, and make a shoe similar to that that would cost $100. 
And how was that done? By looking at all the different components of a shoe, which is what you guys are gonna be doing with your product. What are the components of my final product? Right, we need to cost each one of these pieces in order to make the final product that's going to be at a cost that will give you the retail market that you're looking for. And within that is, you know, how much, how much you're planning to uh, make it as a profit. And it can be from 40% all the way to 70%. In the retail industry, nobody makes more than 57%. So you're designing a shoe that will cost me in China about $13. I'll go sell it to the retailer for 20. And they will make over 100% profit. But a manufacturer per se, don't make it more than 53%. Um, I don't know for each one of your industry uh, where your products will fall, but I'm also gonna do some research now that I know you guys are working on it, so uh, we can talk about that as well. All right, so going to back to the beginning, uh, after being in Europe for uh, all this trend analysis and research, I would come back to New York with that information and sit with the design team and the merchandising team, which is part of the marketing team. Uh, the merchandisers are the ones who are gonna set the way for us to know how much we should be charging for the product, who are my customers, how many styles I need to have, how many colors per style I'm gonna have, and, and which stores are actually interested in buying our shoes. Because although it is Nine West brand, we sell for the big retailers, Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, Ross, um, JCPenney. And for each one of those stores, those are my market segments, for each one of those stores, my line has to look completely different. Even though it is one line, how do I make that line look so different by changing the materials? So for Nordstrom, I'm gonna offer a 100% leather shoe but you're going to Ross, it's all PU, it's all synthetic. Looks like the one that's sold at Nordstrom, but it's not. Uh, within a month, the outsole will come apart. Uh, that's why you go buy Ross shoes and you know they're not gonna last, because they're made cheaply uh, to fit that market need, right? Um, so I spend a lot of time in Europe doing that and come back to New York, work with the designs, bring all the sketches over to Asia. Um, about 15 years of uh, working with manufacturers in both Cambodia, uh, China, and Vietnam. Um, and those are the manufacturing plants, which is another story that I was told not to get too much into it with you guys. Our plan is to work from concept all the way to the prototype piece. From that on, it's a much longer and deeper conversation that um, I'll be happy to answer questions if you guys have, but we will not get into that. Um, my plan is to do some really good uh, exercises with you guys uh, on especially marketing and the marketing piece. So not gonna have like a book, but I will print out some uh, methodic exercises that you guys need to work on and I think Andy will follow up with you when he's sitting with you before we meet again. Um, I also would like for you for you guys to have an understanding of you know both planning the concept development um, the market segmentation um, all pieces that are very important for you to come up with a product, product that will be successful, because that's the intention, right? Some of you guys may really launch this product, who knows? Um, so if we can bring all the pieces together and make you guys um, understand, it will be certainly helpful. Um, can anybody tell me uh, the definition of product development? Does anybody know? Take a shot. Yes. <laughs> Smart, yes. <laughs> Somebody. Think about the two words separate, product and development. Yes. 
Anybody else? <coughs> I imagine there's a piece of it that involves soliciting feedback and incorporating feedback and adjusting based on feedback of some kind. Feedback from? Either from either from our consultants or the literal thing The firm itself. per se. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what about your customers? Do you think they're involved in that as well? I hope so. Okay, so we do understand how important it is, the marketing piece, right, to the creation of a successful product. Okay, okay. So that's basically, that's it. Product development is create, it's the process of developing a product that is successful enough based on research and identification of your market's needs. Make sense? Go. Kind of, a, I'm guessing it's the skeleton kind of a design of your uh, product. Exactly, the architecture, right? Yes, of your product. Absolutely. Uh huh. Uh, so, have we thought about that? Uh, Teams. Yes, we have. Okay. Uh, I heard you guys actually have uh, someone who's sketching products for you. Is that right? Or that's me. Oh, is that you? <laughs> so you're doing that. And there is a woman uh, working as the. Yeah, Terry O'Day. She's kind of the leader of the creative design team. She's a uh, art faculty here. Okay. Um, she's a professor. She kind of facilitates that. <coughs> kind of supervises us, but we're in this room are the main people who actually design it. Okay. And sketch it out. Okay, okay. And then she helps you to clean it up the images and make sure it's or not even not, not even really. Not no, she just kinda supervises us and facilitates that process, but mm -hmm. we do all of the work essentially. Okay, okay. Do you have anything you can show me? Um, in terms of the graphics. Not really. Yeah, I have some sketches of mine. Um, not any for not for them. Not for them. Okay. Yet. We haven't started, we haven't that. started yet. Yeah. We okay. had our first meeting. Maya has sketches of the bottle that um she has a name. She Are you? Uh, I can I can pull them up. Okay. Okay. Have you guys seen in anything now? You're all sort of getting to know one another. Okay. Okay. So these are Maya's sketches that she gave to me, and I haven't done anything with them because I just have met her for the first time. So I drew them when I presented my idea. Your first sketch, and you're gonna you're gonna trace it over and put it on Illustrator. Yeah. Is that the plan? Um, I was gonna trace it over and yeah, work with it and do some 3D manipulations with it with Eric, who's the uh, prototyper. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. Eric is the prototyper. Yeah. Yeah. No, he left. Yeah, he left. He just yeah. left. Okay. Okay. Awesome. But yeah, I can trace these and put them in yeah. All right, so do you guys um, have any questions? Do you, um, we're going to wrap it up, so I wanted to do it as an introduction uh, today, um, and then come back next week with some uh, applicable exercises for you guys to work on. Uh, we'll have a little homework uh, on a weekly basis, but nothing that will take you, take a lot of time. Uh, we'll do them mostly of them together. We'll start it together next week, uh, at least putting out the layout of the, those exercises and where you're gonna go to find the information. And then you, the following week, you will bring it back what your findings are, and then we'll discuss them, okay? To make them applicable to each one of your teams separately. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions? You're gonna learn a lot about shoes.
maybe maybe I'll win somebody over into the shoe oh, industry. Yeah. I'm already uh -huh. there. No, I'm in. very I'm much already, already there. there. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Awesome. So that's my life goal is um, to be a shoe designer. designer? Yes. Wow. How about that? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I I will just tell you guys how my my life in the shoe industry started. Um, I went to FIT uh, for my undergraduate studies, not design. Uh, my background is textiles. Uh, I went in there for textile design. I left FIT and went to um, a job interview to be a foot model for Tommy Hilfiger. Uh, for you to be a foot mo model, oh, as a woman, you need to be a perfect size six. If you are a guy, you need to be a perfect size 11 or nine, depending on the brand. Uh, women, you gotta be a six. So I go in there, they measure my feet. My right foot is perfect. My left is about a quarter, quarter of an inch bigger. He tells me, uh, you can be a foot model, you don't have perfect feet. <laughs> That's Tommy Hilfiger, literally. This is 20 years ago. Um, I, we chatted a little bit. My English was horrible then. Um, he said, but I really like your personality. Do you want to come back and interview for a product development position I have, an assistant product development position? I said, I've never, I know nothing about shoes. He said, you come in and I'll teach you everything. So I go back in the next day. Um, he hires me on the spot. The following week, he sends me over to China, uh, mainland China which is like another world. Uh, you go to Hong Kong and you take a car and you drive about four hours into the country. Uh, and I spent 10 months there in China learning everything about shoes. Getting up in the morning, going to the manufacturing plants and spending time in the sample rooms, learning how to stitch shoes and what are the components uh, and all the materials that made them and the leather, a lot of leather knowledge uh, came out of that. Um, I came home 10 months later and, uh, and I led the design team right there for seven years. Uh, so I called Tom Hilfiger my mentor. I sent him a note twice a year on his birthday and for Christmas. Uh, he's not a very nice man, but knows <laughs> a lot about shoes and branding. You know, he became a name. Um, se uh, seven years into working with him, I was offered a position to work for Nine West as the head designer for the women's casual piece of the collection. So in shoes, just like in any other product, there are different segments and shoes are the very broad concept. Within shoes, I can make sandals, I can make heels, I can make boots, I can make flip flops, and those are the different segments within the product design category, right? So that's very important also for us to be looking at it when we're thinking of a product, do we fall within one category or is it big enough that a branch is or it's broad enough to encompass everything else within that product line, right? Because uh, we may come up with one product and decide, you know, having a, a like a, it's almost like a sub style of that product that you're going to be creating. Okay, I don't, have, I don't think I have enough um, money to create and launch a product that's going to cost me $100, but I can make a cheaper version for $70 and we'll hit a different market, right? A different target market, but they're, they're out there. And we're going to find out that by doing a lot of the research, uh, and, um, which is very, very critical to conceptualizing what this line will look like, whether it's one product or it should have two or three, just to have it a more of a uh, an option to the final uh, consumer, which is sometimes it's what you need to do when you're launching a product because you don't have the funds, you don't have the manufacturing capability of producing that one product that's going to cost a hundred dollars, but you can find somebody to make something that's going to cost 20, you know? So like now, I am thinking of designing a very small shoe line here in Portland and what are the people who will be buying my shoe, do they want to spend $150 and buy a 100% leather shoe? Unlikely. If I was in New York, easily. But here in Portland, people may be willing to pay 50, 60 bucks. So I would have one shoe that is 100 and another one that is a 60. 
uh, and they will be part of one collection, but they are just differentiations of my final product. Make sense? Okay. Uh, so I'm looking forward to being with all of you. I'm gonna send an email out later today um, so you guys have my information and, uh, and also a little outline of what this very first exercise that we're gonna do together next week so you can take a look at it but you don't have to do anything um, uh, anything on it, just bring it with you, and we're gonna work on it together next week, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you.